Hello everyone. A very good morning and welcome to my course Basic Physics. This course is generally made for diplomatic degree students of first year first semester. Myself Gopal Chakraborty, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics. Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, Baripur. You can personally meet me at college premises, ground road, physics lab. Or you can also send me a mail regarding your query or doubt at my given email address. So that is a god physics 6 at the rate gmail.com and gopal dot chakraborty underscore g k c e m at the rate j i s group dot o r g students i have a youtube channel uh, the link is given here you can also send your doubt regarding the topics that i have uploaded in my youtube channel i have already uploaded Lots, lots of video on that, that subject basic physics as per your state council syllabus so, so you uh, just, just go through, through that, that video and if you feel any doubt any problem feel free, free to, to contact, contact me Now, now the, the corresponding course pages are www.websce.org or www.websce.co.in Students, the syllabus for the subject basic physics is already uploaded in the State Council website. So uh, you, you can, can download, download the syllabus for first, first year, first, first semester curriculum from, from the university website as I have given here. here. So, so the, the title, title of this subject is Basic Physics. It, it is under the category of Basic Science, science Course. It, it has, has a credit three, two, two lectures lecture per week, week and two practical per week. week. So, so this, this course is generally made for diploma degree students of first, first year, first, first semester. semester. So, so all the departments except architecture, photography, multimedia and printing technology, rest of the students have to study this course. So uh, as, as per our college we have electrical and electronics and communication. So, uh, these, these two, two departmental students, students have, have to study, study this basic physics, physics as a subject uh, as, as part, part of their first year, first, year, first, first semester, semester curriculum. curriculum. So, so, for this, this subject, subject, I am your subject, subject teacher. teacher. Now, now uh, the, the topic that, that I will be going, going to be discuss in today's class are Burns condition of equilibrium of floating body, Archimedes principle, simple numerical problem, streamline flow and turbulent flow of a fluid, critical velocity, equation of continuity and Bernoulli's principle. So, so statements, statements and equation only uh, and, and corresponding simple, simple problem also. So, so uh, these, these all topics, topics are under unit 2, two that is general, general properties, properties of matter. matter. So uh, prerequisite for, for these topics, topics are basic mathematics, mathematics knowledge to solve the problems, knowledge of basic concepts of science such as physics. physics Visualization and, and analytical approach towards the subject is very, very much necessary. So, so uh, the, the course objective is analyze Archimedes principle and, and condition of equilibrium of floating body, learn about streamline flow and turbulent flow of a fluid, 
critical velocity and equation of continuity and Barnes theorem. So, so after the completion of this topic, students will able to know the Archimedes principle and practical application of it and also the condition of equilibrium of flotation of the body. They, they will also, also able to calculate critical velocity, energy or pressure by using equation of continuity and Bernoulli's theorem. So, uh, these are considered to be as a possible course outcome for this topic. So, uh, this is the second class on the chapter Credit Mechanics. So, in first class, I have discussed what is the fluids, what are the corresponding properties of fluids and what are the Pascal's law and corresponding application. So, uh, I would like to remind you, those who have missed this, this that class, so what, what is fluid? You need to know all those things because uh, in today's class, this is the continuation of the last day's class. So you need to know all these things in a very detailed way. Okay. So uh, those who have missed that video lessons, please go through that video lessons once again. So it will be very easier for you to understand in today's class. So uh, what I am uh, going to tell you that what is fluids. So uh, in physics. The fluid is a substance that continuously deforms under the application of shear stress so or and some external force. So you can say uh, they are the substance with zero shear modulus. So what are the example of fluids? Liquid, gas, plasma, all these are the example of Fluids. So uh, all these fluids have some particular properties. So these important properties or characteristics of fluids are the atom or molecules in a fluid are arranged in a random manner. The fluid cannot withstand tangential or shear stress for an infinite period. It begins to flow when a shearing stress is applied. A fluid has no definite shape of its own. Uh, it ultimately assumes the shape of the container or vessel. So a fluid has no modulus of rigidity also. A fluid can exert or withstand a force in a direction perpendicular to its surface. So a fluid does have a bulk modulus of rigidity. So uh, these are the basic properties of fluids. Uh, actually upon which depending we are discussing all the phenomena of that, uh, that corresponding to that fluid mechanics. So uh, what is that fluid mechanics? Fluid mechanics is a science that deals with the behavior of the fluid at rest or in motion uh, and the interaction of that fluid with the solid or other fluids at the boundary. So here as I have discussed some of the uh, properties or phenomena of fluids uh, that corresponding to the fluid statics. So fluid mechanics are basically classified into two defined one is fluid statics and another one is fluid dynamics. So uh, in many fluid problems where uh, that do not involve the motion rather concern the pressure distribution in static fluid. So uh, when the fluid uh, velocity is zero, then uh, known as hydrostatic condition. So the pressure variation is due to the weight of the fluid. So that important areas of fluid statistics include the pressure distribution in atmosphere, design of manometer forces on submerged flat and curved surface, buoyancy, uh, behavior of floating bodies. Okay. So uh, in today's class, I will basically discuss on that fluid statistics on especially the buoyancy and the condition of flotation of the body and uh, also regarding the Archimedes principle. So now I will uh, discuss all these things in detail step by step. As you know, 
before going, going to discuss what's about buoyancy, uh, hope you have uh, know what is pressure, what is force. Uh, pressure is the force by the unit area. Also, the what is up thrust by thrust by a full weight. Okay, these things uh, uh, I have discussed in my last day's class. Uh, so today I will continue with the next part that is buoyancy. So, uh, what is buoyancy? So, uh, buoyancy, uh, it also called up thrust in an upward force exerted by a fluid that oppose the weight of a partially or fully immersed object or body. So, in a column of fluid, pressure increase with depth as a result of the weight of the overlying fluid. Thus, the pressure at the bottom of a column of the fluid is greater than the top of the column. So, as you know, the pressure uh, can be written as P equals to H rho G, where H is the depth. So, as the upper surface and lower surface, there is a uh, difference between height. So, lower surface has mac maximum depth, so uh, corresponding pressure will be also high. So, uh, now, uh, the pressure at the bottom of an object submerged in a fluid is greater than at the top of the object. So, the pressure difference results in a net upward force of the object. So, uh, the magnitude of the force is proportional to the pressure difference and uh, that is actually explained by Archimedes principle and is equivalent to the weight of the fluid. Uh, that would otherwise occupy the submerged volume of the object. So, therefore, displaced liquid. So, here uh, basically buoyancy comes into act due to uh, the presence of that pressure difference between the lower surface of the body or particle with the respect to the upper surface. Okay. So, there is a height depth difference between these two. So, which actually uh, causes some pressure difference. So, due to that presence of this pressure, pressure difference, uh, the equivalent weight of that liquid, uh, this actually comes into play and that force uh, generated which is uh, act in the upward direction and raises the body uh, to deep, go deep inside that liquid. So, this is your buoyancy or up thrust. Now, uh, Archimedes principle, Archimedes basically uh, tells you that why this thing will happen and uh, how you can relate uh, between these. Okay. So, an object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid uh, is powered up uh, by a force that is equal to the weight of the fluid uh, displaced by that object, okay, partially or maybe fully. So, with that clarification that for a shunken object the volume of the displaced fluid is the volume of the object and for a floating object on a liquid the weight of the displaced liquid is the weight of the object so this is Archimedes principle so where from where you can write that bound force that's equals to weight of the displaced liquid Okay, so weight of the displaced liquid as per Archimedes principle, you know that uh, that weight uh, you can calculate uh, by that uh, the displaced amount of liquid by that part of the particle or body which is partially submerged or fully submerged inside that liquid or fluid. So from there we can write that apparent immersed weight that's equals to actual weight minus weight of the displaced fluid. So, uh, it intends uh, into the quotient of weight which has been extended by the mutual volume. So, from there you can write the density divided by density of the fluid that is equals to weight divided by weight of the displaced fluid. So, uh, from there uh, you can uh, you can derive that yield uh, the formula below that is density of object divided by density of fluid that is equals to weight by actual weight minus apparent immersed weight. So, this is the expression of Archimedes principle. So, uh, from that discussion, uh, we can say that buoyancy that plays an important role for a 
rotation of a body or object as well as the density of the object and density of the liquid is also play a very important role now i will show you what are the corresponding uh, limitations or condition for laws of flotation so here uh, you can see that laws of flotation the body uh, floats in a liquid if the density of the material of the body is less than or equal to the density of the liquid if density of liquid of a body is equal to the density of the liquid the body floats fully submerged in liquid in neutral equilibrium when body floats in neutral equilibrium the weight of the body is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid the center of gravity of the body and center of gravity of the displaced liquid should be in one vertical line so these are the condition for flotation now a uh, center of buoyancy this uh, some terms you need to know because these are very much related with that flotation condition for flotation so a uh, center of buoyancy the center of gravity of the liquid displaced by a body is known as center of buoyancy meta center when a floating body is slightly tilted from equilibrium position the center of buoyancy shifts the point at which the vertical line passing through the new position of center of buoyancy meets with the initial line is called meta center now condition of stable equilibrium for a floating body so uh, the meta center must always be higher than the center of gravity of the body and secondly the line joining the center of gravity of the body and center of flotation should be always vertical so these are the condition for a stable equilibrium for a floating body now up to this archimedes uh, principle uh, buoyancy pascal's law all these are actually related with the fluid statics now when we jump to the fluid dynamics that means now the fluids are not in a rest okay now the velocity is not zero fluid uh, starts uh, moving from one place to another so in that ca case we basically uh, know two different type of motion of the fluid okay as per this motion of the fluid the motion of the particle of that fluid uh, they are uh, different uh, they are segregated into two type of flow is there one is called streamline flow another is called turbulent flow basically now uh, uh, now this uh, turbulent flow and streamline flow uh, we will discuss the corresponding properties of that fluid dynamics and uh, if some condition and principle is there so uh, what is a uh, streamline flow streamline flow uh, in fluids is defined as the flow in which the fluids flow in parallel layer such that there is no disruption or intermixing of layer and at a given point the velocity of each fluid particle passing by remain constant with time so here at low fluid velocities there are no turbulent velocity uh, fluctuations and the fluid tends to flow without lateral mixing so here the motion of the particles of that fluid follows a particular order uh, with respect to the particles moving in a straight line parallel to the wall of the pipe such that the adjacent layers slide past each other like playing card so this is streamline flow and what is turbulent flow turbulent flow type of fluids gas or liquid flow in which the fluid undergoes irregular fluctuations or mixing in contrast to a laminar flow in which the fluid moves in a smooth paths or layer in turbulent flow the speed of the fluid at a point is continuously undergoing changes uh, in both magnitude and direction so uh, this is your streamline flow and turbulent flow so here the ex as per exam simple you can see the, the diagram is given here in case of streamline flow no streamline intersect each other so the previous particle uh, will move the in a straight line and the past particle follow the past particle and corresponding velocity so they didn't intersect or 
uh, overlap with each other whereas in case of turbulent flow no particular uh, straight line is or the particular constant velocity follows by that uh, past or uh, previous particle as per uh, throughout the motion so here they can intersect each other path in case of turbulent flow now what is critical velocity critical velocity is defined as the speed at which a falling object reaches when both gravity and air resistance are equalized on the object so the other way of defining critical velocity is the speed and direction at which the fluid can flow through a contour without being turbulent so uh, how can you derive the equation for a critical velocity so as you know uh, if you uh, consider that v is a critical velocity so coefficient of viscosity uh, eta and density rho and diameter of the tube is d so as the critical velocity depends on this three quantity so using the dimensional analysis we can easily derive what are the uh, relation between them so uh, firstly uh, we write v is equals to some constant eta to the power a rho to the power b and d to the power c so now i will be putting substituting the dimension so uh, where k is a dimensionless constant so velocity has a dimension m to the power 0 l t to the power minus 1 so in right hand side you can write the m l to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 1 whole within bracket square bracket whole to the power a uh, m l to the power minus 3 whole within square bracket whole to the power b and l square within square bracket whole to the power c so uh, now uh, in both side if you comparing the dimension of m l and t what you will get you will get a plus b equals to 0 uh, so uh, minus a minus 3b plus c equals to 1 so from there you can easily calculate your a value is 1 b value is minus 1 and c value is minus 1 so substituting all value you uh, get the your velocity critical velocity expression that's equals to uh, k eta to the power rho uh, k eta rho to the power minus 1 and d to the power minus 1 or v equals to k eta by rho into d so this is the expression of critical velocity next one is uh, that is Reynolds number a uh, Reynolds number is an important dimensionless quantity in fluid mechanics uh, used to help predict flow patterns in different fluids flow situation so at low Reynolds number flows tend to be uh, dominated by streamlined flow while a high Reynolds number uh, makes the flow turbulent so here uh, the expression of this Reynolds number r equals to rho into v into capital d by eta where rho is the density v is the uh, velocity of that liquid d is the diameter of the tube and eta is the uh, coefficient of viscosity so uh, in case of fluid dynamics it is a very important equation that is called equation of continuity because uh, it may be possible when the fluid is or uh, some liquid that flows through a tube uh, all the radius of the tube throughout that flow may be constant may not be constant so if the radius of the tube changes so how that uh, fluid dynamics fluid behaves or what will be the corresponding motion or which part will be constant so from here you can write that it equation of continuity states that during the streamline flow of non viscous and incompressible fluids through a pipe of varying cross section the product of area of cross section and the uh, normal fluid velocity remain constant throughout the flow so here we can write root 1 a1 v1 that's equals to rho 2 a1 rho 2 a2 into v2 so that means uh, from there you can write rho the density of the liquid is always constant so both side rho 1 is equals to rho 2 it will cancel out so ultimately you will get a1 into v1 is equals to a2 into v2 so where a is the cross sectional area and v is the corresponding velocity 
another important principle is that Bernoulli's principle. Uh, that principle states that the sum of pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy per unit volume uh, of a non viscous and incompressible fluids in a streamlined irrotational flow remain constant along a streamline. So, uh, from here you can write P1 plus half into uh, rho V1 square plus uh, rho into P into G into H1 uh, that's equals to P2 equals to half into uh, rho into V2 square plus uh, P into G into H2. Uh, so that means the both this energy, kinetic energy, pressure energy and potential energy per unit volume remain constant. So, uh, as per your syllabus, you have only the states means of that equation of continuity and uh, boundless principle. So, uh, no derivation is required as per your syllabus. So, uh, you need to know what are the limitations of boundless principle. So, this boundless equation ideally applies to a fluid with zero viscosity or non viscous fluids. In case of viscous fluids, uh, we need to take into account the work done against viscous drag. Vernoulli's equation has been derived on the assumption that there is no loss of energy due to the fraction, due to friction, frictional force or resistive force. But in practice, uh, when fluids flow, uh, some of their kinetic energy gets converted into heat due to the work done against the internal forces of friction or viscous force. Vernoulli's equation is only applicable uh, to incompressible fluids. Uh, because it does not take into account the elastic energy of the fluids. Bernoulli's equation is applicable only to the streamlined flow of a fluid and not when the flow is turbulent. And this Bernoulli's equation does not take into consideration the angular momentum of the fluid. So it cannot be applied when the fluid flows along a curved path. So these are the limitations. Now uh, we will solve some simple numerical so that it will be very uh, easier for you to understand in today's uh, class. So uh, the, the first one, uh, the density of ice uh, is 0.918 gram per centimeter cube and that of the water is 1.03 gram per centimeter cube and iceberg floats uh, with a portion of 2.24 meter cube outside the surface of the 224 uh, meter cube outside the surface of the water find out the total volume of the iceberg so uh, as you know the density of ice that is rho equals 2.918 into 10 cube kg per meter cube and density of water that is rho dash that is equals to 1.03 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube let the volume of the iceberg that is V meter cube, then the volume of water displaced that is V dash, that means V minus 2 to 4 uh, meter cube. So, uh, as you know, as per Archimedes principle, we can write the weight of the iceberg that is equal to weight of the water displaced. So, V into rho into G that is equal to V dash into rho dash into G. So, both sides G we cancel out, and if you substitute the all the value, what you will get, you will get that. V, uh, the volume of the iceberg, that is equal to 224 into 1.03 divided by 0 0.112, that means uh, 2060 meter cube. Next, Next problem, a uh, body of mass 6 kg is floating in a liquid with two third of its volume inside the liquid. So find out the bound force acting on the body and the ratio between the density of the body and density of the liquid, taking into account the acceleration due to gravity g is 10 meter per second square. So uh, when a body floats, its apparent weight is zero. So the bound force is equal to weight of the body because weight of the body will be balanced by that bound force. So that means uh, 6 kg into 10 meter per second square, that means 60 newton. And also uh, as per uh, as per Archimedes principle, you can write that bound force that is equal to weight of the displaced liquid. So V into rho of our bound force, rho into G, that is equal to 2 third V into rho into L into uh, rho L into G. So rho B uh, divided by rho L that is equal to 2 third. So it is the ratio of the density of the body and density of the liquid. 
Next one, a cylinder of high 20 meter is completely filled up with the water. Uh, find the velocity of flux of water through a small hole on the side wall of the cylinder near its bottom. So as you know, the velocity of flux that is V equals to 2 G H. So as H is 20 meter, so substituting that value we get the velocity of flux that is 20 meter per second. Another one that is, uh, at what velocity does water emerge from an Orifice in, in a tank in which gauge pressure is 3 into 10 to the 5 newton per meter square, square before the flow starts. So, so density of water, water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So, so as you know, P equals to H rho g. So, H equals to P by rho g. Substituting that value, we get H value is 3 into 10 to the 5 whole divided by 1000 into 9.8. Now, velocity of V flux that is V equals to 102 g h. If you substitute all the value, you will get the velocity is 24.495 meter per second. So, uh, these are the possible books that you can refer. The evaluation process is the same. Students have to appear for a 70 marks in semester exam and 20 marks mini semester exam and rest 10 marks for attendance, introduction and assignments. So, hope all of you have understood and enjoyed today's class lesson. In the next class, I will complete the last part of this chapter, fluid mechanics. So, thank you.